Good morning and welcome as we get together over God's Word. I was working for the college on a cleaning project with a couple young ladies. I was washing windows, actually, when a schoolmate of mine jumped out of his car and began to walk by the building. My stomach got a little queasy. My mind got a little uh, judgmental as I looked at the fellow that um, we had some things in common, but we had had a little conflict together. While I was processing some of this, the quiet voice of the Holy Spirit said, Pray for him. So I immediately began to pray, Lord, convict him. Change his heart. Bring him around. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, No. Be become his friend. Make him your friend. And so I did. Instead of judging him, I began to try to find ways to encourage him. Instead of seeing his faults, I tried to find common ground, and one of the areas of that common ground was writing. We both were a part of a creative writing class together. Our professor was a great encourager and had helped both of us to find outlets for our writing. And uh, in that area, John and I began to build a relationship based on friendship and respect for each other. And when we do that, God began to teach me through the Holy Spirit uh, about planting friendship seeds and learning how to cultivate and water them so that they grow and bear fruit. It happened when I permitted the Holy Spirit to help me start seeing with the eyes of my heart. Ephesians 1 verse 18. When your heart is right with Christ, things look differently. People look differently. Christians act differently. God's people are changed. Why is that? Because our hearts are enlightened by love, not just any love, but agape love. Agape love is God-like love, a love that is not selfish or self-serving or seeking one's own will and way. Agape love is God's filled and anointed and divine love for us and for us in Him. The Apostle Paul goes on to say, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may Know the hope to which he has called you, Ephesians 1.18. And what is that hope? Certainly it has to do with eternity and heaven and eternal life, but it also has much more to do with us right here, right now as well. It is the hope that we will be like him, that is like Christ, 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. That hope is that we will become like Jesus, holy, but also filled with amazing love. There is no holiness that can change the human heart or condition that has agape love absent. That is why God wanted me to make John my friend. That is why God wants you and me to be more like Jesus. Christ's love is not weak. Think about that for a minute. Christ's love is not weak. Christ's love, alive in Stephen, gave him the courage to be the first Christian martyr for his faith, whose name was recorded in the Bible. And a man named Polycarp, not someone everyone knows, but nonetheless a very important Christian who was the last one of those who was personally trained by the apostles who knew Jesus. When Polycarp was seized and hauled to the amphitheater and threatened with death by burning fire unless he would recant his faith in Christ, Polycarp responded with boldness. He said, Eighty and six years have I served him, and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme him, my king, who has saved me? I am a Christian. This godly agape love is powerful. The Apostle Paul says that power is the same as the mighty strength that God exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. Ephesians 1 verse 20. And with that agape love filled resurrection power, God the Father also gave to his son all authority. Let me pick up the scripture back here in verse 20 where we left off a moment ago. And seated Jesus at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age but also in the one that is to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Ephesians 1, verse 20 
through 23. No wonder we call him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let nothing turn you away from our Lord Jesus. Let nothing cause you to deny him in word or in action. Let there be no compromise in us on this and every day. Let us clearly show those around us, I am a Christian. Let's pray. Praise Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you that you are Lord indeed. I thank you that you are filled with your divine and sovereign and glorious agape love and that you want to, through your Holy Spirit and the blood shed on Calvary, you want to fill us with that agape love ourselves, that we would love as you love and live out our faith and devotion to you and to others in the same manner that you did, Jesus, when you gave your all on the cross of Calvary. Give us this power. Give us this strength. Give us this love, I pray, in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I hope uh, God has blessed you in some way or will with something that we've seen in his word or talked about today and that you will just praise him and worship him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. God bless you.